The edges of a cube are increasing at a rate of 10 meters per hour. How fast is the volume of the cube changing when the side lengths are 5 meters? Well, let's draw a picture first. I know my drawings are not that great, but bear with me for one moment. So we have this cube, and the side length of a cube are all the same. Let's call it x. Now let's make a list of what we know in this problem. The edges of a cube, that is x, they're increasing at a rate of 10 meters per hour. So dx dt is 10 meters per hour. How fast is the volume of the cube changing? So we're looking for dv dt when the side lengths are 5, so when x is 5 meters. So how can we calculate dv dt? First, we need to write an equation that relates the volume of the cube to x. Now the volume of a rectangular prism is the length times the width times the height. In this case, the length of the cube is x, the width is x, and the height is x. So x times x times x, or 1 plus 1 plus 1, is 3, so the volume is x cubed. So now that we've related v to x, we can differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to time. So the derivative of v is going to be 1 times dv dt. And the derivative of x cubed, using the power rule, is 3x squared times dx dt. So that's the formula that we need to use right now. But let's get rid of some stuff. So we can see that x is 5. And dx dt is 10 meters per hour. Now let's do the math. 5 squared is 25, and 3 times 25 is 75, and 75 times 10 is 750. So dv dt is equal to 750. Now what are the units for dv dt? So notice that we have meters squared times meters per hour. Meters squared times meters, that's going to be cubic meters. So it's cubic meters per hour. And since the edges of the cube are increasing, dv dt is increasing, so it's equal to a positive number. And that's it for part A of this problem. So that's how you can calculate the rate at which the volume of a cube is changing. Now, let's move on to part B. How fast is the surface area of the cube changing when the edge lengths are 8? So x is no longer 5, but it's 8 meters. So let's change that number. So how can we find the answer to this question? How can we determine the rate at which the surface area is changing? How can we find dsa dt? So first, we need to come up with an equation that relates the surface area of a cube to x. The surface area is going to be the area of all six sides. So notice that we have a side in the front, one in the back, so that's two sides. Here's the one on the left, and here's the one on the right, so that's four sides. And then we have the bottom face of the cube, and the top face of the cube. So there's six faces. Now the area of each face, the area of a square is the length times the width, or simply x squared. So the surface area of a cube, because there's six faces, all of which are going to be the same, it's going to be 6 times x squared, because you have to add up the area of each face, each of which is x squared. Now let's find the derivative of both sides of the equation with respect to t. 
So the derivative of SA is going to be 1 times DSA dt. And then for the right side, we need to rewrite the constant based on the constant multiple rule, and then differentiate x squared based on the power rule, which is going to be 2x to the first power times dx dt. So 6 times 2 is 12, and then we could replace x with 8. Well, let's put 8 meters, so we can pay attention to the units. And then dx dt, that's 10 meters per hour. So what's 12 times 8? 10 times 8 is 80. 2 times 8 is 16. So 80 plus 16 is 96. And so 12 times 8 is 96. And then 96 times 10 is 960. So DSA DT is going to be 960. Now what are the units? So we have meters times meters, which is going to be square meters. And for DT, it's going to be in hours. And it makes sense because the volume is usually in cubic meters. Area is going to be in square meters, which we do have here. So that's the value of DSA dt. It's 960 square meters per hour. So that's it for part B. Now let's move on to part C. How fast is the length of the diagonal in the cube changing when the edge lengths are 12? So let's replace this number with 12 meters. So first, let's draw the diagonal that we're focused on. So it's the distance between these two points. And I'm going to draw it in basically a red color. So let's call it Z diagonal z. So we're looking for how fast z is changing. So we need to calculate dz dt. Now how can we come up with an equation that relates the diagonal z to x? Now first we need to draw another diagonal which is going to be at the bottom face of the cube. Let's call that diagonal L. Notice that it forms a right triangle. So if you want to redraw it, it looks like this. So this is x, x, l. What is the relationship between x and l? Well, according to the Pythagorean theorem, which is uh, c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared, c being the hypotenuse. l is the hypotenuse in this example, and a and b are x. So l squared is basically x squared plus x squared. Now, let's focus on another triangle which I'm going to highlight in blue. And that is this triangle here. Notice that it forms another right triangle. So I'm going to redraw it. And for that triangle, we have L at the bottom, X and Z. This time, Z is the hypotenuse. So this is Z squared is equal to X squared plus L squared. And now we can replace L squared with X squared plus X squared. So therefore, z squared is going to be x squared plus x squared plus x squared. So 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3. So z squared is equal to 3 times x squared. And so this is the equation that we need to relate z and x. Now let's go ahead and find the derivative of both sides of the equation with respect to t. So the derivative of z squared is going to be 2z times dz dt. And the derivative of 3x squared is going to be 3 times 2x times dx dt. So now we can calculate dz dt. But first, let's divide both sides by 2 just to get rid of that 2. Now we need to find z as well because we don't have that. So let's use this equation to get z. So we know that z squared is equal to 3 times x squared. 
and in this example x is 12. So I recommend taking the square root of both sides at this point. So z is going to be the square root of 3 times the square root of 12 squared. The square root of 12 squared is the square root of 144, which is 12. So z is basically 12 times the square root of 3, which I'm going to write over here. Now let's plug in everything. So this is z, 12 square root 3. We need to solve for dz dt. And then we have 3 times x, where x is 12. And then dx dt, that's still 10. So if we divide both sides by 12, we can get rid of this. And then on the right side, we have 3 times 10, which is 30. So the square root of 3 times dz dt, that's equal to 30. Now let's divide by the square root of 3. So dz dt is equal to 30 divided by the square root of 3. And then we need to rationalize the fraction. So let's multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 3. The square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 9, which is 3. And 30 divided by 3 is 10. So dz dt is 10 square root 3. And the units will be the same as dx dt. So it's going to be meters per hour. Because x is a unit of length, just as z is a unit of length. So that's the final answer for dz dt.